Today we're going to review sequences, um, which is going to be the basis of a lot of stuff that we need for the material we're going to cover second semester. So some review of sequences. A sequence is basically a list of numbers, is how I look at it. A list of numbers. A list, if I could write today, a list of numbers. So what you're doing with this list of numbers is you're going to have some sort of formula and out of this formula when you start plugging in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 for n, you're going to come up with a list of numbers. a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3. Now if I stopped at 3 that would be a finite where we have an end versus if I continued on we would have an infinite. And what we're going to be doing with these sequences is we're going to be looking and determining whether or not they go to a certain value or if they don't go to a certain value. And again, that's going to lead us into something that we need to be able to do next semester. Okay, types of sequences. Explicit is a formula. for a certain amount of n terms. So a sub n is equal to n times, um, I don't want to throw an a sub n in there, I was thinking about something else, n squared minus 2. And then you plug in 1 for n, 2 for n, and get a, your list of numbers. Recursive relates to a previous term. So something like this. So you have your n your a sub n term, you take something and you do something with the term previous and you say add 3 to it, multiply it by 4. Arithmetic. Okay, when we have a common difference this is the one that you should remember. We do a lot of these in Algebra 2 and in Precalculus. And just so you know, the formula for arithmetic nth term is this. I don't know why I'm looking at my notes. I have this memorized from all the Algebra 2 work that I do. <clears throat> so that's in the explicit form. In the recursive form, the nth term, we take the previous term and we add the common difference to it. I didn't have that in my notes. I'm kind of proud of myself. Geometric, they have a common ratio. So you're multiplying to get to the next term. So my nth term, I take my first term, multiply it by my common ratio to the n minus 1. Now, recursively, we take the previous term and we multiply it by the common ratio. So just so you guys realize, arithmetic, we add geometric, we multiply. Okay, for the first five terms of the sequence given by this formula, this is an explicit. So a, our first term, notice how n is 1. Think about it like that. n is 1, 1 over 1 squared plus 1, which is 1 half. Our second term, 1 plus 2 squared. I'll show plugging in the 2. So 2 squared is 4, 5, 1 fifth. Our third term, 1 over 3 squared plus 1. 3 squared is 9, plus 1 is 10. Our fourth term is equal to 4 squared plus 1. Five terms, okay, just making sure I'm not doing more work. 1 over 17. Our fifth term 
is 5 squared plus 1. 25, 1 over 26. Okay, <clears throat> now this is a recursive. where I have to use the previous term. So my second term, I use my first term plus twice what n was, which is 2. So b sub 2 is equal to my previous term, um, which is 7 plus 4, which is 11. So my third term. I use my previous term plus twice n, which in this case is 3, I get 17. My fourth term, I take my previous term plus 2 times 4, which in this case is 25. And we keep going through and doing this. Isn't this fun? I think it's fun. I think this is a good break for us before we approach our Thanksgiving break to kind of review something that you may not remember or quite honestly a lot of students struggle with. And yes, I'm talking all the over this. Um, 2 times 6 and we get 47. Okay, now our grand total. Our grand total, our seventh term. We take the previous term. And we take 2 times 7, and we get 61. Yes, I was looking at my notes on that one. Okay. Considering that sequence, write the explicit form, find the 17th, find the ex recursive formula. So what you want to do is you want to recognize, is this arithmetic or geometric? Am I adding a common number to get to the next terms, or am I multiplying by a common number? Okay, so the difference between these terms, I'm adding 4. Add 4. And I probably should have a few more in there just so that we realize that it is in arithmetic. So the explicit formula that I gave you guys on the first slide or second slide, first term plus d, the common difference. I meant to tell you guys what the common difference was. What I keep adding, which is 4, 4 times n minus 1. And you're welcome to simplify that. Actually, I want you guys to simplify that. I decided I want you guys to simplify that. Okay, now we plug into the 17th, so I'm looking for 4 times 17 minus 11, and that is equal to 57. Now the recursive, how I keep getting to my next term. So my next term is the previous term plus whatever the common difference was. And then make sure you're always giving me what the first term is. You can't do this without giving me what the first term is. Okay, hopefully you have realized that we talked about four, four different types of sequences. This is the fourth one we haven't talked about. To get to my next term and each subsequent term, we keep multiplying by a negative three. Okay, so my common ratio is negative 3. I forgot to tell you that's what R stood for on that first slide. So my nth term is equal to my first term times the common ratio to the n minus 1. So if I'm looking for the ninth term, we have 1 third, negative 1 third, Marnell, Oh, see, I don't have a negative one-third in there. Oh, I screwed this up. Okay. Negative 3 to the 9 minus 1. And I should get a 
Oh, I don't have to do my math. I have the answer in my notes. It's just the wrong sign because I changed the problem. That's what we should get. Okay, writing a recursive formula. We take our previous term and we multiply our common ratio by what the previous term was. Again, remember, make sure you're telling me that the first term is negative one third. Okay, this is important. These words converge and diverge are gonna mean a lot to us. So a series converges, goes to a certain value. If the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n is equal to some value. So you're, you go to a certain value, you go to some certain value, your value of your limit, if this formula, the limit as n goes to infinity, has some certain value. Your series diverges, or doesn't have a value, if as I go to infinity, of whatever formula we have, does not exist. So all that limit stuff that we did in calculus A, B in the, at the beginning of the year, that is going to turn out to be very, very, very important to us this year. Okay, some rules. Hopefully you guys realize these rules. Okay, L and M are these values. So basically look at it almost like distribution. You can distribute your infinity through, your limit through, and it turns out to be L plus M. Same thing can apply with all these. L minus M. L times M. C times our limit was L. And then we have L, I don't know why I'm writing L like an N today, over M, assuming that M cannot be equal to zero. Hey, because remember, we can't have zero in the denominator. Okay, so finding this limit. Finding the limit. So the limit as n goes to infinity of this formula, a sub n, why did it do that? Okay, I apologize. a sub n. Okay, well look at, this is a rational function. Remember the rational functions, the fives don't matter. Those don't matter, we look at the sign of these, that simplifies to be three. Yes, its series converges to the value of three. Okay, so does this series converge? So we're looking at the limit as n goes to infinity, of this formula so we do the limit of each one of those individually bringing out those limit laws hashtag I don't know why I said hashtag hashtag algebra algebra 1 AP calculus AB I'm sorry guys I'm in a very odd mood right now I got a lot of sleep last night this limit goes to one, but let's talk about this limit. As n goes to infinity, doesn't it just kind of fluctuate between positive and negative? So this limit would not exist. Okay, our last example. I'm sorry, this is kind of a long video. I wanted to look at what the time was on this. Okay, does the sequence converge? Okay, so let's get what a few of our values are. Our second one, we take the previous term, five plus two, that goes to seven. Seven plus two is nine. 
if we were to graph these, let's just look. We're along the x-axis, we're graphing the end. So we're graphing one, two, three, four, five. Let's get a third one, nine, 11. Let's, I'm sorry, this is a fourth one. And a fifth one. Okay, I wanted to see if I could just move a piece of that. I guess I can't. Okay, because I don't need my negatives. I didn't plan this out correctly. Okay, so one is five. Seven, then I'm up at seven. Then I'm up at nine. I'm up then at 11. I'm up at 13. Notice how this series, hopefully you recognize, is arithmetic. I think I may have spelled that wrong but it looks linear. Arithmetic sequences, if I were to connect the dots, are linear. Now, technically, that line shouldn't be there, but each one of these dots, it represents a linear part. Is this value gonna go to some number? So basically, I'm asking you, the limit as n goes to infinity of some recursive formula, is that gonna go to some value? No. So again, this on uh, this one also does not exist. Okay, remind me on Monday. I'm going to show you guys how to graph these on your calculator, and we'll talk about what that previous example, um, the one that where the limit as n went to infinity of negative one to the n. We'll talk about what happens there. Okay, so please work on the assignment that I've given the sub for Monday.